Hello and welcome. This is Matthew, and I have bad news. I broke my mainframe. <laughs> How did I break it, you ask? Well, let's log on. And you can see login failed, JCL error in logon procedure. Then Wilson logged off. Enter logon or log off. Well, I want to log on. I can't. JCL error in login procedure. So I was messing around with my TSO logon procedure. I do not have a backup of it on this particular system. I didn't make a copy before editing it, nor do I have another user that uses a different logon procedure so that when I broke this one, like I can't log on as IBM user because IBM user uses that same TSO logon procedure. So I cannot access TSO on my system. All I can do is log off. Now, I know where the problem is, right? I know it's because I made some changes in my TSO logon procedure that apparently I introduced a JCL error uh, into that logon procedure. But I don't have a way of interactively editing that, right? Without being able to log in and even use the primitive TSO edit command, uh, this, this TSO method of accessing my mainframe isn't going to do me any good. So what are my options? Well... Option one is I can still run jobs through the card reader, right? I can submit jobs through the card reader. And we have the standard utilities like, uh, what would it be? IEB copy, uh, IEB update, IEB uh, Jenner. So I would be able to put together some JCL jobs that would print the current contents of the data set that I messed up or the member uh, of sys1.proclib that I messed up. I could print that out, I could look at it, I could uh, maybe just see where the error is or undo my changes, and then I could make another job that I would submit through the card reader that would attempt to uh, update or replace my logon procedure member in sys1.proclib. Uh, and I could do all that with JCL using the standard system utilities through the card reader. But to be honest, that sounds like uh, it would take a bit of work and I you know, I like just editing these these files interactively in some kind of full screen editor. Okay, so the other option would be to take my uh, my DASD, whatever volume has my sys1.proclib on it, and attach it to another mainframe that is working that I can get a working TSO session in, edit it from that, uh, make the changes I need, and then unmount, detach the DASD, bring it back over, and uh, and then I, this would involve, I assume, re ipling this system because I, uh, whatever volume that, that sys1.proclib is, is on is obviously, it's probably MVS triple zero. In any case, I can take my DASD over to another mainframe, um, or IPL from another volume on this mainframe that has a working TSO and make the changes and then come back, re IPL this one, and I should be good to go. There's a third option that is similar, um, but a little more straightforward or useful for recovery purposes, I think. And I'm going to switch over to a web browser. There is a standalone utility called ZZSA from, uh, I'm going to guess that's pronounced something like Jan Jaeger. And ZZSA is a standalone full screen editor for the IBM mainframes. Now, what we mean by standalone is this is delivered as uh, essentially a, uh, a card deck image, a, a stack of, of cards that is IPLable. So I can stick this program's deck in my virtual card reader, IPL from it, and then I'll have, of course, access to all the volumes attached to my emulated mainframe. Uh, and importantly, it knows how to read volume table of contents, the VTOX of DASD volumes. I can find the uh, the file set that I need to edit. It understands partition data sets. And so I can then go ahead and edit PDS members uh, to update the contents of them. So this is a great recovery tool. I've had to use it a couple times in the past. Uh, this is not a video I was planning on making, but last night, I, like I said, I was making some changes to my TSO logon procedure and apparently made a mistake and broke it. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to uh, to show you this ZZSA 
standalone editor uh, utility. Now we can download it from this website. Uh, however, this utility actually comes with Hercules. Uh, so if you download Hercules in the source code, I think there's a util directory that has this. Uh, if I switch back over to my console, let me go over to my Linux shell. And in my version of Hercules, which was installed through the Debian package manager, uh, it installs it into this user share Hercules directory. And you can see zzsacard.bin is the IPLable text of the uh, ZZSA utility. And so we can, lead, we can read that in our card reader and IPL from it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to shut down my running system because we're going to need to uh, obviously IPL it from that, that utility. Um, so I'll just go through the standard shutdown procedure, PTSO, Znet, comma, quick, and then stop Jez2. And I'm just going to be a little impatient and uh, just go ahead and run my ZEOD now, quies. Okay, so my system is shut down. So switching back to the Hercules console, I'll hit escape just to get this kind of uh, device view from Hercules. We have two card readers on our system. Uh, at address C, we have the card reader that is listening on the socket. And then we have another card reader at address 1C, uh, which we've been using just for local cards that don't run through Jez2. Now, I can IPL from either of these devices um, so that I don't mess up my socket listener. I'm going to try loading this utility and IPL from 1C. So let's go back. I'll hit escape again. We can load that uh, that card deck into our 1C card reader. And that was at user share Hercules ZZSA card dot bin. This is a raw binary, uh, you know, compiled object code. So we'll load it as EBCDIC so no translation happens. Uh, and then we'll put the EOF at the end after Hercules reads all of that in. Okay, so that's now in my card reader. Uh, the other thing to note is this utility is written for slightly more modern mainframes. So we don't want to keep running in our S370 24-bit uh, mode. We want to set our Hercules architecture mode to the ESA 390 instruction set. Now allow us to run this utility, and then we'll just we'll switch it back uh, before we boot our MVS system again. And now we should be able to IPL from that card reader one C. So let's do that. I'm going to go back over to my console, and I think at this point, if I do a clear, so Control C for C3270. Yep. So that's identified the console I'm on, and we are in the ZZA uh, ZZSA standalone utility. So it is password protected. The password is all capitals ZZ secret. And that's documented over on the web page. Uh, you can uh, zap the executable code to change that password. I think the idea is if on your mainframe you kept this utility around on a spare DASD or something so that it was available for recovery purposes, um, this would just prevent somebody from being able to IPL to that particular copy of it uh, and do something. So that's that's why it's password protected, even though it's a standalone utility. So now we're in. Uh, and in a lot of ways, this is almost like an ISPF or a, a review front end environment that I can browse, I can edit, uh, and then we can get some information about volumes. So in my case, uh, what I need to edit is a member of the sys1.proclib data set. And I think, I'm guessing that's probably on my MVS000 volume. So let's list all of our devices. It looks like option zero here. And we can see we have uh, the device list. And it looks like we're getting into some DASDs here. So let's page down through this. All right, so it's only giving me the volume labels on my 38, 3380s and 3390s. So I'm not quite sure which of these 3350s is my 
uh, MVS triple zero. Now I can look at my Hercules configuration. In fact, I'm just going to switch over to Hercules and hit escape um, because I think it's on the first page here. Yeah, so we can see here, okay, so our MVS triple zero is the 3350 at 151. So let's go back to ZZSA and let's list the contents of the, uh, what did I say, One, 151? 0151, hit enter, and yeah, so this is MVS triple zero, and sure enough, uh, oh no, there's sys2 proc lib. No, okay, so sys1 proc lib is probably then on MVS res, um, so I do know, because I always IPL from it, MVS res is probably, or I know is device 150, and yeah, sure enough, sys1.proclib is on MVS res. By the way, now that I've loaded device 150, this utility knows the volume serial number MVS res is associated with that device. So I am able to just refer to it by volume serial number in the future. That's what this note is about. Okay, so I need to edit a data set or member. So let's do two, the data set name is sys1.proclib, and that's on MVS res. Uh, the member name, this is my TSO logon procedure. I think, was this ICKJACCT? Going from memory here. No, member not found. Uh, so what we can do, let's just browse the data set, sys1 proclib on MVS res. Oh, it needs to know the member name. Uh, list PDS, that's what I want. <laughs> Number four. You can tell I don't use this utility often, but uh, like I said, it is pretty useful when you mess up your system. Uh, we'll just give it the device here because we're here. Okay. Uh, I was close, but not quite. So it's I-K-J-A-C-C nt so we're going to edit that data set name sys1 proclib member name is i k j a c c n t on device 150. now we're in an editor that again appears very similar to the review editor or the ispf editor um, i'm not sure how extensive the feature support is uh, if we have find and replace um, but Nevertheless, I can overtype uh, commands here, or overtype lines here. So it looks like, let's see if we can find the error. Uh, oh, I see a problem right there. I misspelled disp for disposition. I spelled it disk. So I want a P there. And do I see any other obvious errors? That was probably the problem. Well, I definitely know that was a problem. I just want to make sure I, I didn't make a similar mistake elsewhere. DSN is spelled correctly everywhere. DISP is now spelled correctly everywhere. So that was the problem. I had a K instead of a P in this one data definition. So I think, do I just do save? Data saved up here, okay. So we can exit out of that. Uh, so yeah, we're done, I think. At this point, we can just exit with X. And the system is now uh, halted. So I'm going to go back over to my Hercules console, hit escape again. I'm going to switch my arch mode back to S370. And now I can simply IPL as usual from my system residence volume. So that's IPL 150. Uh, no system options, we just hit enter, reply zero, no rec, hit F12. And now that the system is IPL, we'll start VTAM. And then back over on my TSO session. Let's see if we can log on. Excellent, we are back up and running. So a uh, couple of lessons there. One, if you mess up your TSO uh, logon procedure, 
you will not be able to log on to TSO. It will just reject it if there are any JCL errors. So it's good to have another backup procedure that you know works that you don't mess with and a user that's able to log on with that procedure. Because uh, as you saw, it is all too easy, as I just did, to essentially lock myself out of TSO by breaking my only logon procedure. But if you do break it, it's not the end of the world. There are several options to fix it, including uh, making some job streams that you submit through the card reader using the standard utilities, fixing it from another system that you're able to attach your DASD to, or my preferred method in a lot of these cases is just IPL from that standalone editor utility that uh, comes with Hercules. It's already on your system if you have Hercules, most likely. And then you're able to get into your volumes, get into those data sets, edit members, and uh, fix whatever problem you may have introduced, re-IPL into your full system, uh, and then hopefully you too are back up and running. So my mistake hopefully turned into your gain in terms of seeing uh, you know, what you do if you mess up your system in such a way that you can't get into it, but you don't want to restore your last full backup of the system and potentially lose any work that you had done in the interim. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you in the next video.